Who the heck is this guy? James Stewart? Hmm. December 21st, 1985, Haines City, Florida. Turn pro in 01, weighs a buck 42. Number 258? That doesn't seem right. Uh, excuse me, uh, MX2002 featuring Ricky Carmichael. You guys are, you guys have some problems here. What's going on, everybody? It's Kellen Hickan here from Start Your Systems, and welcome to another Flashback Friday video where today we're going to be playing MX2002 featuring Ricky Carmichael on the PlayStation 2, talking a little bit about James Stewart because I believe this is the first video game that the legendary James Stewart was ever in. Uh, this game is basically 21 years old. It came out uh, in the 2001-2002 range, somewhere in there, right when the PlayStation 2 came out. Um, I kind of remember this as like the first PlayStation 2 game I ever got. I may have had a, a couple before it or something like that, but it was definitely like the first like real motocross game I ever got uh, that was, you know, just like I felt like ahead of its time personally. Like when I first saw the commercial for it, I was like, holy smokes, like you can do backflips and look at how like fluid the gameplay is. And honestly, going back and playing this, I I'm still pretty impressed with how it feels. Like it, it obviously looks a little bit, maybe not, as graphically up to snuff and maybe physically it looks a little bit wonky and stuff too but like the the fluidity of the bike moving in the air and uh everything like that is, is just really cool but we'll talk about all that in a second because i'm going to have two tracks in this video first one that we're going to be playing here is of course uh loretta lynn's in hurricane mills tennessee and the reason i chose this track specifically is because in this game, it says James Stewart turned pro in 2001. Uh, of course, he did so right after racing Loretta Lynn's in 2001 and eventually, uh, you know, had his first full season in 2002 racing for Factory Kawasaki. I think we all kind of know if you're watching this video who James Stewart is. If you don't know, I'll quickly, you know, run through the details of him. Um, arguably the fastest motocross racer of all time. I, I don't even know if it's arguable. Uh, he, he created so many new ways of racing a motorcycle uh you know on a dirt bike track basically that are still used to this day most notably the scrub the bubba scrub as it was called when he first kind of like brought it out uh in 2003 and other riders had kind of had iterations of what it is which is basically trying to stay low on a jump by leaning the bike over on the jump to like force the bike lower to the ground but james really brought it to a whole new level with the way that he would do it and in his 125 career, which was from 2002 to 2004, he won a lot and almost everything. It took him a little bit to kind of get his uh, feet, you know, underneath of him for a 125 Supercross title, but he was immediately ridiculously fast outdoors on a 125. Um, and yeah, just was incredible. I think it's still the winningest 125 rider of all time. Um, which is now the 250 class, of course. Uh, but from there, after winning you know, a few 125 titles, moved up to the 250 class and was instantly, before even making his 250 class debut, pretty much expected to be a title guy. In 2005, when he made his 250 class debut in the premier class, he's going up against you know, multi-time champions at that, po at that point in time, Ricky Carmichael and Chad Reed. Uh, Jeremy McGrath was racing, but kind of in and out of the series. Uh, and they called the 2005 Anaheim 1 Supercross race the perfect storm because it was finally Stu meeting Ricky and Chad, and it was incredible. I went to that race. Kevin Windham won in the mud, but uh, it, it, the timing was there, right? Like, it was James was racing. Uh, it was all great until he broke his wrist the next week uh, in practice at Phoenix and then came back halfway through the season at Orlando and uh, won his first ever 250 main event, I think, at, like, Dallas or something that year. But uh, the point is he was there and he was there to stay. And for the next couple of years, him and Carmichael and Reed just had some epic, epic battles. Uh, Stu and RC uh, split the Supercross titles in 2006. Um, James won the world title, I believe, and Ricky won the AMA Supercross title. And then um, in 2007, with Ricky running a partial schedule, James finally won his first ever AMA Supercross championship at that point in time. Um, would eventually become a two-time Supercross champion, won it again in 2009, and at this point in time is the second winning a Supercross rider of all time with 50 wins behind Jeremy McGrath with 72. Uh, James was the only person ever to have a perfect season outdoors that wasn't named Ricky Carmichael. He did it in 2008. Ricky did it in 02 and 04, um, and that is still something that stands to this day. Uh, stat wise like he doesn't have i guess like what you would consider the the best all-time stats because he only has two supercross titles only has one outdoor title but he has so many wins and is like i said widely looked at as the 
you know, arguably the fastest rider that's ever lived because of the things that he did. But he crashed a lot, did get hurt kind of a lot, and then eventually started running into some co concussion problems late in his career and uh, was forced more or less to retire basically after 2016, though it took him a little while to kind of announce it. And then he was just recently elected into the AMA Motorcycle Hall of Fame. So he had an incredible career, but at this point in time in 2001, he was known, but maybe not expected to do all the things that he eventually went on to do. I think some people probably could have said that they would have known that James Stewart would do everything that he did because he was an elite talent, uh, even at a young age. But um, to see him in a video game this early on and know eventually what he would become, it's just kind of cool to go back and relive these days um, and, and see you know, this is this is kind of where it starts. Like this is like right on the teetering of the beginning of his pro career, and he's finally made it into a video game. And uh, from there on, man, he just absolutely took off. So when I loaded up this game, I wasn't expecting to run into James Stewart in this game because it's been a long time since I played this game, and I don't remember everybody who was in it. But it was cool to come across and see him. And it's funny how they kind of made it. Uh, work because when you race the 125 class in this game james is definitely not the fastest guy like i was battling casey lytle and um roger tain and matt walker and these other guys and Stu was like a fifth place guy so uh kind of weird how it works but that's a lap or a couple laps around loretta lynn's now i'm going to jump up to the 250 and ride Glen helen because obviously for me this is a local track and uh it's crazy how big they built this track if you guys are interested in watching me do a full playthrough of this game, for example, uh, I'm going to be doing a live stream. If you're watching this on Friday, December 2nd, 2022, I'm going to do a live stream tonight on our Twitch channel. I'll link it in the description below that we're going to probably just do a full playthrough of the game. It's going to be pretty late at night, but uh, I think I can probably get through the game in about three hours, so we'll do that. And uh, if I can, I'll upload the whole VOD up on our YouTube channel as well, so you guys can watch that back. But just really cool to load this up and play this again. Like I said, for me, it was such a um, kind of like a big part of my childhood in a way because I had my first console was a PlayStation. Obviously, I had a ton of motocross games on it. I did have a PC and I would play motocross madness and stuff like that. But when I finally got a PS2 and we finally got to this level of physical gameplay, I guess it was it was like opening up a whole new world. And at this point in time, I felt like I knew that motocross games were going to be epic in the following years, and they did. Uh, this is a THQ release. It wasn't a Rainbow Studios release, but THQ put this and MX Superfly out, obviously, then partnered with Rainbow Studios and had MX Unleashed, MX vs. ATV Unleashed, MX vs. ATV Untamed, MX vs. ATV Reflex, MX vs. ATV Alive, all within this window from this game coming out, excuse me, until Alive coming out. That's a 10-year span of eight games, basically, that THQ published. And they were, in my opinion, all memorable wins. And, you know, we also had uh, other games mixed in there. MX Rider. We had um, MTX Moto Tracks. Uh, obviously, MX Simulator came out in 2008, but that's a PC game. Like, the console side of motocross games from this point onward, I felt like, just took off with the, uh, you know, this game coming out. And this was the predecessor to MX Superfly. So a lot of people reference MX Superfly as another great old game. And this was the one basically right before it. It was uh, MX2002 featuring Ricky Carmichael. And then I think the very next year, MX Superfly featuring Ricky Carmichael came out. And then that would be the last of the featuring Ricky Carmichael games. Now, Carmichael was in games after this, but he was, uh, you know, basically like around this time, late 90s, early 2000s, I think a lot of game companies were trying to copy the Tony Hawk model. Tony Hawk Pro Skater was wildly successful on the PlayStation. And then they had uh, THPS 2 and 3 and 4, and then eventually uh, Tony Hawk's Underground and a bunch of other stuff like that. And so, you know, Carmichael and McGrath both had games. Jeremy McGrath had Jeremy McGrath Supercross 98, and then Jeremy McGrath Supercross 2000. Um, and then he was also in a game called Freestyle Motocross featuring Travis Pastrana and Jeremy McGrath. Like, it was common at this time to have the pro rider's name on the game. And so Carmichael first was on a game called Championship Motocross featuring Rick Carmichael. And that was on the PlayStation. And then he was also on a game called Championship Motocross 2001 featuring Ricky Carmichael. 
So those two games I played the heck out of on a PlayStation, and then this was the first PS2 release that was a featuring Ricky Carmichael game. Um, and I'm hoping to at some point in the next, you know, maybe year or so to sit down and interview Ricky because I've been able to talk to him a few times now that I work in the media, of course. Uh, and I want to sit down and, and kind of go over the chronological history of these games, his involvement with them, um, you know, what he thought about at that time being, you know, when Championship Motocross came out, I think it was 98 that it came out. Ricky was in his second year. He, he was on the verge of winning 125 titles and eventually would become the greatest of all time, right? But uh, this was still early days. And then when uh, this game specifically came out, MX2002, it was right after he had finally like dethroned the king. So it was maybe at his, like I guess, like peak popularity uh, in a global sense because after that, he became a little bit hated. He switched to Honda. Um, the fans like Pastrana maybe a little bit more. And then Chad Reed came over, and obviously that stole some of the attention. But when he, when when Ricky dethroned McGrath, like it was a big deal, and uh, McGrath was obviously so popular, so it was like, of course, Ricky's also going to be popular. So I feel like this is like the zenith of Carmichael's career right here. This game coming out, and uh, I'd be curious to know a little bit about like you know how interesting was it to be the guy suddenly of the sport, have a video game franchise backing you like this, and have you know kids growing up playing games that had your name attached to it like it was setting himself up for a career where his name was going to be very well known for a long time regardless of if he went on to do greater and greater things which he did he, he ended up winning you know 150 races at that point in time i don't think he had won even 50 races but he won so much more he had two perfect motocross seasons um it just was you know, like, I guess the perfect storm that this game was called MX 2002 featuring Ricky Carmichael because in 2002, Ricky Carmichael had his first ever perfect season um, aboard a Honda. So, but this game is based off of 2001. It has Ricky on a Kawasaki. It has um, a lot of old names like Larry, Larry Ward, for example, is passing me right here riding a Kawasaki at this point in time, but he would ride, uh, I believe, a Honda. And, no, he rode a Yamaha, excuse me, in 2002. Um, but just a lot of old names that you don't see. Uh, much of any more Jeff Emig, I think, is on a, a Yamaha in this game as well. Um, it's just really, really kind of unique to just go back and see this. And then talking a little bit about this Glen Helen track, there's there's Emig on the Yamaha. This Glen Helen track is gnarly. You may have noticed on the first two laps coming down and back up and back down Mount St. Helens on this track, I'm doing like 90, 95 miles an hour. Obviously, it was a video game. Like, as much as they tried to make like a realistic game, um, at this point in time, there's only so much they could do to control speed and control the the gnarliness that these tracks provide. I mean, look at here we go. We're on 97 to the bottom of the hill. Um, so, as much as these games, in my opinion, at the time were like just felt so realistic compared to anything I'd played before. Obviously, we still had a ways to go before we got there. But I also playing this game now didn't really mind that the speeds were astronomically high or anything like that because. It's still just such a fun game to play. That's why I'm really excited tonight to do a live stream and kind of play through it all and talk with everybody about it and stuff like that. But, uh, man, just such a cool game. Um, really fun to dive back into this for me, do some of these more Flashback Friday videos because it just, gosh, takes me right back to my childhood. When this game came out, I was nine um, or eight or nine, somewhere in there. And, yeah, I was just, like, such a huge fan of the sport at that point in time. I'd been going to races... Basically, my whole life, my dad obviously got me into the sport. Um, I was racing like a KX65 probably about this time as well. Uh, just so much stuff at this point in time that was piquing my fancy about the sport. And to be able to play a game that I felt like was unbelievably realistic for its time was also just like icing on the cake. And obviously, this, this love of the sport and this love of games is what eventually started this YouTube channel for me. So this is 12 years before I even thought about starting the YouTube channel, playing this game you know, in my bedroom and blasting music and really just uh, enjoying the sport for what it was at that time. Like, it's it's so cool to flash back to my childhood a little bit and talk about it. So, anyway, that's a little bit of a uh, synopsis of MX2002 featuring Ricky Carmichael, talking about James Stewart and a couple other things today. Hope we see you guys on the live stream tonight. But if not, thank you guys for watching another video here on Start Your Systems. Hope you all enjoyed this one, and we look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. So long for now.